Welcome back, dear tinfoil hat crazies, to the latest Need to Know. I'm Ross Coulthart, and from Los Angeles, across the ditch, underwater by the sounds of it, Bryce Zabel. How are you, mate? Uh, fine. I love I love it when you start talking that tinfoil hat stuff. That makes me that makes me laugh. Uh, I got to tell you, it has been raining a lot here. It's historic rain. Uh, I try to be an optimist, as you know. So from my point of view, I don't have to water the lawn, the trees, or the shrubs for a while, and um, and I don't have to fill the pool up. So I'm good to go. But yeah, it's been it's been tough. I happen to live at the top of a hill, so uh, nobody's actually going to slide their house down into my house, but. Um, but yeah, it's been something, but we're out of it for a day and now we're, we're going to get more rain tomorrow. So now, of go. course, both of us have been so busy, Bryce, because we've been watching the innumerable appearances and commentary <laughs> by the departing Pentagon UFO boss, Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick, who has stuck his head up on practically every tame mainstream media outlet to debunk and dismiss the UAP phenomenon. Uh, I think his starting point was a Scientific American article on the 19th of January, where he basically flagged that the forthcoming investigation report from his office has found no evidence of aliens, only allegations repeated, circulated by UFO, UFO claim advocates, and their unsupported claims that ignored contradictory evidence, yet captured the attention of policymakers and the public, driving legislative battles and dominating the public narrative. A whirlwind of tall tales, fabrication, and second or third hand retellings. Bryce Zabel, hang your head in shame. You and I are a couple of tinfoil hat yeah. crazies. The Pentagon says it's not true. We must all pack our bags up and go home. And, you know, I got to tell you, folks, I am tired of this guy. I mean, he joins a long list of uh, people that include Dr. Edward Condon, Phil Klass, Donald Menzel, Neil deGrasse Tyson, Carl Sagan, Mick West now. And, you know, I just feel like, um, you know, I'm done with him. I, I, can we just all agree to call him Voldemort from now on and forget about him? I mean, at least after this episode, I feel like this guy is, uh, in all those interviews you mentioned, Ross, he's insulting all those hundreds of thousands of witnesses over the last 80 years, people that included uh, just average citizens, but also included pilots, military pilots, military observers, law enforcement people. Uh, doctors, lawyers, farmers, you name it. Every manner of uh, human being has seen some of these craft. And I'm not talking about lights in the sky and all the things that he's willing to easily dismiss. I'm talking about people who have seen structure, who have actually stood out in their backyard or their local parks or at the beach and seen craft, you know, and, and he is so dismissive of those people. I feel it's so insulting uh, because at first it doesn't sound scientific and second, it doesn't sound respectful. So Voldemort, uh, this is your last call on need to know because I don't want to talk about you after today. Like, I think we do have to deal with what he said in some detail because it's important at least to be seen to be dealing with it. Because Frankly, what I think Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick's efforts in the last few weeks show is not just the random bleatings of a departing bitter old bastard who's resentful that nobody came to talk to him at Aro. I think it's a more concerted campaign. I think that what this is, is the beginning of an attempt by the gatekeepers, the people who control access to the legacy crash retrieval reverse engineering program in an effort to try and dissuade policymakers in Congress from taking this issue seriously. His was a charm offensive. Kirkpatrick's was the beginning of an attempt to try and dissuade policymakers from engaging with this issue, to literally dismiss what you and I are saying, and as you say, what many of these first-hand whistleblowers are saying, is complete rubbish. He claims, for example, that he did a full-year, full-scale, full-year-long investigation of the story, um, uh, told and retold by a small group of interconnected believers and others with possibly less than honest intentions, none of whom have first-hand accounts of any of this. Now, I'm going to call bullshit on that. Flat yeah. bullshit. That is a complete 
lie, whether he knows it or not. If he's not lying, somebody's lying to him. Because I know for a fact, Bryce, that first-hand witnesses have come forward. They may not have trusted Sean Kirkpatrick to come forward to him, but as Senator Marco Rubio and other political leaders in the Congress have revealed, they have heard directly from first-hand witnesses, and their evidence has been taken under oath by the Senate Select Committee for Intelligence and also by the Inspector General of the Intelligence Community. Small wonder that few, if any, whistleblowers felt like coming forward towards Arrow, the Pentagon's UFO investigation office, because the, the behaviour of Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick, his transparent bias, his lack of objectivity, his complete willingness to debunk and dismiss, and his aggression towards anyone who would come forward with direct first-hand evidence is there to see. Frankly, his investigation was never a serious one, and he really should be confined to the dustbin of history. You know, you mentioned uh, Marco Rubio, the senator from Florida, who uh, was the vice chair of the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence. And one of the things that he said that I, I love this quote, he said this, I believe, on News Nation. Um, he stated that the whistleblowers are, quote, saying to us what you've seen out there on the public record about legacy UFO programs. Most of the whistleblowers have held very high clearances and high positions within our government. So you do ask yourself, what incentive would so many people with that kind of qualification, these are serious people, said Rubio, have come forward and make something up? Really, what about at least trying to deal with the reality of what he's he's dismissing all the senators that have had any briefing. He's dismissing uh, a whistleblower who held his hand up before Congress and took an oath. And, you know, a lot of these people are, are in, in the same situation. Mike Gallagher, who's uh, a, a representative from Wisconsin, sits on the House Intelligence Committee. Um, he said, um, in response to Kirkpatrick's denial that individuals uh, don't have firsthand knowledge, Gallagher stated that witnesses are telling congressional investigators that they've been part of this or that UFO program, resulting in what he called, and this is a quote from Gallagher, a variety of pretty intense conversations. Yeah, howdy. I mean, I don't know how he's going to explain all that stuff. It, it does defy logic. I, I like yeah. what uh, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer said where he announced the bipartisan legislation that um, certain gatekeepers in certain private aerospace companies and certain completely compromised politicians had a role in blocking. But Schumer alleged flatly that surreptitious government legacy programs are attempting to reverse engineer exotic UFOs of non-human origin. And in complete contrast to Kirkpatrick's claim that this is a small group and that this is a bunch of self-interested believers, Schumer inferred that a vast web of UFO whistleblowers and witnesses informed his legislation. And he cited, quote, multiple credible sources to allege that elements of the US government have illegally withheld UFO-related information from Congress. That's the issue. And they can put up as much smoke and magic mirrors as they like. The simple fact is that bleatings from irrelevant people like the departing Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick aren't going to make a jot of difference. There is momentum in the Congress and they want answers. Here's what I wonder about Voldemort. What's his motivation? What is going through his mind? Because at least when he spoke before in the rare interviews he did and then when he spoke uh, before the Senate committee, he tried to sound respectful and like he was really looking into it. Now that he's left, he's done, like I said, his victory tour uh, across the media, but his tone is outrageous. His tone is of a guy that's kind of pissed off and is he's willing to tarnish really terrific witnesses uh, with the brush of being liars or being uh, so 
uh, silly that they are misled and they they are seeing things that don't exist. And you know, this includes people like Ryan Graves, the you know the fighter pilot uh, who's been so wonderful in testimony even before Congress, where he also held up his hand and uh, promised to tell the truth and the whole truth. So are we? What what Kirkpatrick seems? Ah, I said his name. I'm sorry. I took a vow. Uh, what Voldemort seems to be saying is ignore all of that. None of that matters. And not only that, none of the stuff that came before since the 40s, uh, none of that matters either because we haven't really looked into that. And by the way, uh, there's probably two to 5% that, uh, you know, maybe we can't explain, but if we really looked into them, we could explain them. Well, first, you should really look into them so you can explain them. And second of all, Ross and I are not interested in this context, in the 95% of the sightings that he can explain, because that wasn't the mandate. The mandate was to take a look at the smaller number of the unexplainables, the ones that I was talking about, where you see craft, or where you see flight characteristics that can't be explained, or where people are seeing uh, spheres flying around with cubes inside them, and all this other, uh, what we can only call anomalous stuff. So I just feel like, he's sort of given up the pretense that he's even trying. And so that's why it's time for Voldemort to ship out. You know, it's funny. I, 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 I have been urged to give Sean Kirkpatrick some credit that he's a serious scientist. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a published, obviously well, well quoted scientist, you know, he's respected, but frankly, the way that he has conducted himself hasn't diminished the whistleblowers, I don't think. It hasn't diminished the people who've come forward. It's diminished him. It's made him sound like a bitter old bastard, a grumpy old man. I'm not going to call him Voldemort. I'm going to call him maybe Captain Grumpy Pants or something <laughs> completely belittling and pejorative yeah. because he shouldn't be taken seriously. His splenetic debunking rantings are the rantings of a person working to an agenda. And what it belies is that he was always working to an agenda, even though he pretended or maintained to the Congress that he was doing a rigorous scientific investigation. Several people that I've spoken to who came forward to Arrow have told me they don't feel that they got a fair go from him. And they are, in, in at least one of the cases that I know of, direct first-hand witnesses. And let me give you something just off the press, Bryce. This is This is... This is the weird narrative that's going on at the moment. I'm quoting here literally from a source who's just contacted me confidentially to confirm something that you and I first spoke about a month or two ago. You'll, you'll all remember that we did a story, and I did it also on News Nation, where we talked about the Alaska UAP object. And I said definitively that sources of mine were telling me that the Alaska object was anomalous. I didn't have a lot of information at the time, but I now do. I've just received this. The Pentagon tracked the Alaska object, confirmed that it was a silver cylindrical UAP and not a balloon. The president, Joe Biden, ordered the shoot done and multiple assets were involved with the recovery. HC-130, F-16s for cover, and OGA black helicopters. That's a direct quote from somebody who has a source in the Pentagon, and he says that he is 100% certain of this account. This is the sort of evidence that, frankly, Sean Kirkpatrick had an opportunity to investigate. And this is why I think we just need to ignore this nonsense now, and why I think the initiative the activism that's going to make a change here, that's going to force public disclosure, is clearly not going to come from the Pentagon or the intelligence community. It's going to come from determined, rigorous, independent investigation, and hopefully also from, from renewed congressional investigations. You know, uh, I agree. Uh, I, I and I love that something like that can come over your phone while we're recording. You know, I, I have a, a phone too, but what comes over my phone usually isn't that, but it's more like a relentless parade of selfies from my family, um, which I enjoy getting. Um, but uh, I think you're correct. Uh, here we are in this situation. It feels very familiar. And I wonder, um, well, actually, I think we should clear up one thing uh, because we did start with um, 
the doctor. Who's taking over at Arrow, and what do we feel will be the relevance of that new hire? What do you think? I think Arrow has, sadly, it's got some good people on it, I'm told, but the leadership and the level of direction from the um, from within USDI, the Office of the Undersecretary of um, Intelligence in, in the Defence Department, uh, it's the leadership that's directing it that's key and important. And I know there are frustrated, frustrated people inside the Pentagon who want this stuff investigated. They're as sick to death of the, the level of lies and deceit as you and I are and as our audience are. And, you know, they're not all bad people. There are some very good people on the inside who want this stuff out and who are frustrated by the lies and is bewildered by the secrecy as well. They don't understand why Joe Biden doesn't just get up in front of a podium and say, yeah, yeah, sure, th these were anomalous objects. Yes, we are engaging with something that appears to be a non-human intelligence. It, it bewilders me, and it bewilders many of my sources, why they don't feel able to speak candidly about this. And Bryce, the thing that worries me about this is, and I know I've said this before, what they're doing by doing this, by trying to push this all back in the box, is pissing off people inside the Defence Department, the intelligence community, and private aerospace, who have just frankly had a gutsful with the lies. And there are people who are deliberating right now, and I'm talking to some of them. They're thinking about coming forward. And when you hear people like Dr. Kirkpatrick splenetically ranting and debunking and calling people liars and being dismissive and saying there is no evidence. What are you meant to take from that? That's a message. It's a warning. It's a whiff of grape shot across the bows of anybody who's thinking about coming forward. It's a big fuck you. And frankly, they're not going to come forward to the Pentagon's UFO office. It's irrelevant now. It's made itself irrelevant. And what the Pentagon is doing by its behavior is forcing this into the open in a way that they're not going to be able to control. And some call that catastrophic disclosure. I hope it doesn't happen. I hope there's a more measured and considered approach, but I suspect it's going to happen. Now, there you've gone again and used the F word, and now I'm going to have a whole problem getting this uploaded to YouTube. See what you've done to us? No, seriously, um, we are stuck in the mud. We are stuck in the mud. That's because what a lot of people thought based on the, the sort of the track that we've seen since 2017 is, okay, we are quickly going to get past the admission that something legitimate and, and uh, strange is happening, and we'll get on to trying to figure out what it is. But as long as we play this game that is being played where we say, yeah, nothing to see here. No, we looked into it. We don't really want to talk about it anymore because there's really nothing going on. That's the problem. I would like us, you know, the, the way to avoid catastrophic disclosure, and I don't even know if I buy that concept. I actually don't. Um, but the way to avoid it in any case would be to get this over with and rip the Band-Aid off and, and simply announce. And again, I'm not saying we should give everybody five gigabytes of video or anything uh, without going through a declassification process, but we could simply announce that we have evidence that a non-human intelligence has been interacting with us and that we are reviewing uh, the, the evidence that we have and, and we're going to be uh, taking a disclosure process in an organized way. And because we're refusing to do that, uh, that is only going to make it worse. That's where your, uh, you know, the phrase uh, catastrophic disclosure comes in when people say, well, if the government uh, isn't going to do it, then we're going to have to do it ourselves or something crazy is going to happen and then we're all going to be in the middle of it. But I, I tend to think what the U.S. government seems to be doing right now is they're taking themselves off the battlefield uh, for whatever reason. And uh, we all know how that works. Uh, if you refuse to do something that needs to be done, somebody else may just do it for you. Uh, it could be the people, it could be uh, our adversaries, it could be our allies, but this isn't gonna continue forever. Uh, and the only way it could continue forever is if it turned out that uh, Voldemort was right and there is nothing to see here. But I 
and you as well, Ross, and, and almost all of our listeners and viewers have done the homework. We have read case after case. Uh, we've, we've heard people talk about these cases. We've read books. We've seen the articles. And uh, we've, we've listened to the witnesses. And so, you know, maybe that, maybe we didn't have the millions of dollars to study it that uh, Dr. Kirkpatrick did, but he sure wasted his money and my time by doing it the way he's done it. I hope that changes. I hope that instead of this being the negative that it feels like right now, that something will come along and turn it around and, and put us back on the path. I, I still think that's possible, and I'm very hopeful that it will be. Let's put a couple of quotes on the record just for our audience so that they know sure. that we're not just speculating here. Senator Schumer, who's one of the most powerful people in the Congress, he's the Senate Majority Leader, quote, the US government has gathered a great deal of information about UAPs over many decades, but has refused to share it with the American people. That is wrong. And additionally, it breeds mistrust. We've also been notified by multiple credible sources that information on UAPs has also been withheld from Congress, which, if true, is a violation of laws requiring full notification to the legislative branch, especially as it relates to the four congressional leaders, the defense committees and the intelligence committees. And then Let's not forget the fact that um, Kirkpatrick, in his dismissive debunking, chose to ignore what happened when committee members heard from the Intelligence Community Inspector General just a few weeks ago, Thomas Monheim. He confirmed to Congress in a private hearing recently that he did indeed find David Grush's complaints to be credible and urgent. And Representative Moskowitz came out and said... Based on what we heard, many of Grush's claims have merit. That flies in complete contradiction to what Kirkpatrick asserted. Who's lying? Yeah, well, I have my theories, uh, as you know. Uh, one of the things this has done, folks, and, and uh, it's, it's very obvious, it has stirred up a hornet's nest on social media again. Uh, people are now uh, uh, not not taking it lying down the way that uh, uh, the doctor has talked about this subject, and and there's some little uh, fires building all over the place. Travis Taylor, who many people know, uh, said recently on LinkedIn, he said, "quote In order to find substantiating evidence, you have to actually look." Errol was a fa farce to shovel the manure back into the manufacturer, and the public doesn't realize it. Well, the public's starting to realize it, as you said, a lot of us are, who have already become uh, woke on this topic. Um, boy, I shouldn't have used that word. Now everybody's going to write me. But those of us who are aware of what the real facts of this are know that we are being snowed and um, and they're not taking it lying down now. So, so you've got people up and down social media fighting about this right now. And I'm kind of wondering, it does feel like if the object of... Uh, Kirkpatrick and or the, the government in, in, in general was to make it seem less credible that these things could actually be true. Uh, it would be to stir up social media so that we fight amongst ourselves about what's going on because a lot of people do that. And then people say, well, I don't want to listen to that. That's just more of the same. These people, they're all, as you said, tinfoil hat wearing folks. And, and I think that there may be some of that in this pushback, that it gets everybody all uh, fighting and uh, not fighting uh, for the truth, but fighting amongst uh, each other about who's telling it and, and who can be relied upon and who can't. But again, I believe that too will pass. Uh, the topic is too big. And at some point, we're going to have to begin to deal with it. Um, I wonder what your thoughts are about that issue, though, uh, Ross, because I think what we've seen in social media is something I haven't seen. I don't think I've seen it before where, you know, people are complaining that they've been harassed. Uh, people are, you know, I, I even understand there's people altering people's Wikipedia pages if they're uh, if they're active in the in the UFO area. Uh, it, it just seems like a well, and there's disturbed people making comments that are just shockingly and appallingly false about uh, 
people who I know are good, decent people. So I just wonder, do you see this as the wheels coming off a little bit or what, how's, what's your take on that? I, I actually think it's slightly more sinister than that, Bryce. I think it's organized. I suspect it's ah. organized. I mean, my wife was highly amused to hear that I'm apparently divorced in the um, ongoing campaign to try and discredit me, my um, Wikipedia page was adjusted with completely untrue false claims. Apparently, I was involved in a newsroom brawl at a previous TV network, which is complete falsehood. It's a complete lie. Um, the, the, the story, which is a gross exaggeration, is that um, I actually stepped in between two guys who were having a, a fight. One guy was being assaulted by another in an office. I know I never discharged any punches. I never engaged in any violence. I merely stopped violence from happening in a newsroom. And uh, that has been twisted by liars out there, trolls on social media, who've used it in, in a really quite stupid and puerile attempt to try and discredit me, pulling down all of my um, journalistic awards, any journalistic achievements that I've made, and a clear, transparent effort to try and discredit me. Now, frankly, I hope they're just trolls. I hope they're just people who make a living by trying to pull people down on social media. And sadly, those people exist. I certainly hope it's not an organized campaign by more sinister sides of the intelligence community or government. Um, I certainly don't think I'm that important. The, um, the thing that I, I just wanted to add one little comment about Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick to put a nail through his credibility. It wasn't us that put the stake through the heart of his credibility, Bryce. It was the Pentagon. Because in an interview um, with Politico just this week, Kirkpatrick told them in a, um, uh, a story that during his time in Arrow, he felt that the DOD, the Defence Department, wasn't allowing the public to know enough about the mysterious aircraft that he was investigating or the government's um, efforts to investigate them. Now, that's complete bullshit spin on his part. And the thing I love most of all is that the Pentagon called him out on it. His own bosses, his own former bosses, the Pentagon, came out and challenged his version of events, disputing his assertion that they'd blocked his efforts to appear in the media. And I think that's important for you and me, Bryce, because as you know, I made multiple requests to talk to Dr. Kirkpatrick, and I never got a response. Frankly, what we're seeing at the moment is an orchestrated attempt to put all of this back in a box by using the same tactics of ridicule, mockery, stigma, and contempt. And mate, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. And but it does tell me uh, this was never about only the government disclosing something. If it was, it was back in the early days. Uh, increasingly today, it's about, uh, we're going to have to do it ourselves. There's a whole collection of these kind of groups, uh, Soul Foundation and the Enigma Labs and New Paradigm and SCU and all that. A lot of people accepting the, the, the I guess, the, the reality that we have to start digging in and, and do it ourselves, as I said. Now, one of the people that's doing it is you, my friend. And I, I just wonder if uh, I, you, you are helping so much over at News Nation and they've done such uh, an important and powerful job of, of continuing to look into this. My question is, can you tell us anything that you're working on? And if not, can you at least tell us how you work on it and, and what we and, and whether we should expect to see more things coming up on News Nation? I think you are going to see a lot more coverage. This year is going to be, and I know everybody rolls their eyes at this, this year is going to be a very interesting year. There are reasons why it's all going dark. The reasons are, firstly, yes, I am. I've made no secret of this. I'm talking to people who purport to be working inside the legacy crash retrieval reverse engineering program. Yeah, the one that Dr. Kirkpatrick says doesn't right. exist. Um, right. The, the, the simple fact is those people have got a very clear message now from the Pentagon and the intelligence community that we don't have your back, that despite what Congress has very clearly laid out in legislation, that there should be no 
criticism, no attacks of people for coming forward about illegal programs that have been concealed improperly from Congress. It's been made very, very clear by the Pentagon's person who they appointed to investigate UAPs that we are going to bully and intimidate you if you try and come forward. That's the very clear message and perception that I take from the way that Dr. Kirkpatrick has behaved himself in the last few weeks. All he's done is go out on a media rant which is designed to intimidate people from feeling they cannot feel okay about coming forward. As I say, it's not going to work, but I also urge patience from people out there. I've actually had people threatening me, saying, tell all, reveal everything you know, or we're going to attack you. And I think, well, big fuck you. The simple yeah. fact is, this is methodical plotting work. We're entering into the boring phase of investigation. It's checking sources, verifying information, doing the homework, the very thing that, frankly, a lot of the critics say we never do. It's not an entertainment, this. This is really serious. If this is true, if this story is true, it is the biggest story in human history. If it's true, everybody from the president down are concealing knowledge of a non-human intelligence engaging with this planet. I happen to think it is true. And I'm having sources telling me this on a repeated regular basis. And where we're at at the moment is we're, da we're dancing a very delicate dance. We're trying to find ways for these people to safely bring that information forward. And I can't reveal a great deal, but you are going to see some very interesting stuff coming forward in the next few months. Well, I know you're stirred up about this, Ross, because by my count, we've already got two F words and three BSs out of you. So I just you know, have to call it what it is, Bryce. I mean, I'm, I'm really sorry. You Americans are so nice. You're very, very friendly and good, amiable, folksy people. And I know a lot of people are insulted by the use of profane language. But here in Australia, we do like to call bullshit when we see it. And uh, excuse I me, let bullshit. me write that one down. We're now up to four. <laughs> That's four I really five. do. I call bullshit. I'm just over the whole nonsense. Six. Wow. Being polite about this. You know, three the, to six the, in one statement. This, is, this really. is what this is, is an attempt by the gatekeepers yeah. to put it all back in a box. And even the fact that um, the man who will not be named, who's recently left as the boss of the Pentagon's UFO office, has flagged that the historical review that the Pentagon was ordered to do by the Congress of UAP knowledge since World War II, he's already flagged that that report is going to be a complete fizzer. Now, I talk regularly to people inside the defense and intelligence community who tell me that any such perception conveyed by any such Pentagon report would be a complete lie. That any reasonable investigation, any reasonable analysis of everything since Roswell 1947 would have to admit a knowledge of a non-human intelligence. I don't know for the life of me why they're maintaining this fiction, but let's let them try and tell it. And let's let them be undone by their own lies. And if we're wrong, hoist us by our own petard. Prove it. You know, let's 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 resolve this once and for all. I mean, the simple fact is that, as um, for example, Black Vault John Greenwald just pointed out recently, even though they say they're being fully transparent with the public and releasing information, they're still classifying records. They're still trying to lock up information on UAPs. I quoted Chuck Schumer earlier, the Senate Majority Leader. He's very clearly of the view, as are many Congress people and senators, that there is a cover-up going on. I don't know why they're doing this, but by golly, we're going to get to the bottom of it. I have to say the thing that makes me crazy is because, you know, I, you know, I've got a library over here at a couple hundred uh, UFO books. And I read that uh, Sean Kirkpatrick said that uh, the, the historical report was done. And he was, I think, just looking it over to make sure that uh, I guess they got their grammar right or something. But I don't have a lot of hope for it then, listening to what he said. If there's nothing to see there, they can't really write what I would consider to be an accurate historical report. So again, we have to do that. And that's kind of where I come from. You did say one thing, and I, I, 
I think we can move on here. We, you did say one thing. It's not an entertainment, which is kind of interesting because, as, you, as people know, you and I both come at this from different points of view. Yes, I have been an investigative reporter. I admire the investigative reporting you're doing. But I also have a foot in Hollywood where uh, I do uh, think of it sometimes as an entertainment because that's the way that we can uh, tell a story that is true uh, in 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 another format. Um, so, for example, um, I do think it will help uh, if some of these projects I'm working on uh, come to fruition. Like right now, I'm being uh, I've been hired to write a, a, a scripted podcast called Undeniable, and this scripted podcast, as opposed to ours, which is unscripted, obviously with all the swearing in it, uh, the scripted podcast um, is about how we. Uh, go from basically a situation where people aren't believing in what's really happening to where the the situation is absolutely clear. Now, I guess you could call that catastrophic disclosure. Anyway, that's what I'm writing because I feel like that's the kind of thing that can also help people get their uh, arms around what the enormity of this issue is and how it's going to change. So on the entertainment thing, folks, one of the things that uh, we've, we've done here is we have... Uh, uh, worked with uh, a talented artist, Cherish uh, Alexander, who is a singer-songwriter here in Los Angeles. And uh, she has written uh, a tremendous song called Need to Know. And I I, I want to hear from her and I want to play that song for you. Need to Know, by the way, is something that the first time it got uttered in a in a context uh, like, like our podcast was back in 2010, uh, Richard Dolan and I put out a book called AD After Disclosure, and and uh, Cherish and I, who had worked before uh, uh, on on uh, another TV show I produced, uh, actually came together and and produced a song called Need to Know, and that came out in 2010, and now it's uh, 14 years later, and uh, Cherish has taken another uh, shot at it. So I want to hear from her first, and then we'll play the song after that. So let's take a listen to her right now. Hi everyone, I'm Cherish Alexander, and I just want to send my heartfelt thanks to everyone who's watched the new video for Need to Know, and I just wanted to say how grateful I am to be part of the Need to Know community with Russ Coltart and Bryce Abel, and I wanted to give you a little behind the scenes story about our new reimagined version for Need to Know. So Bryce Abel and I met back in the day when he was the creator of the TV series The Crow, Stairway to Heaven for NBC, and he ended up using my song Goodbye for a title song for one of the episodes. Back in 2010, Bryce was about to release his new book, AD After Disclosure, and Jackie and Bryce Abel had written lyrics for a song entitled Need to Know, and they asked me if I would be open to writing the melody. And when we did the original version for Need to Know, we were going for more of a fun vibe. You know, the track is very danceable and we had the sci-fi synth happening. And, you know, 14 years has gone by and so much new information has come to light. And people are actually starting to take the UAP situation very seriously. And we wanted to reflect that in the new version of Need to Know. We wanted to connect emotionally with people hoping it will inspire transparency. So with the songwriting process, sometimes you can write a song in a couple hours, and sometimes it can be a process of 15 years. And that's what I've found with our song Need to Know. You know, it's taken on a whole new meaning and a whole new life of its own, and it's more relevant now than ever. I'm ready to be told Time for secrets to unfold it's our time to come of age Time for truth to turn the page Don't want to be inside the dark And live within a question mark Are you a friend or foe? Tell me now We need to know You say We must wait our turn you say too much to learn. You say cover up is fine. That your plan, not mine. I'm ready to be told. Time for secrets to unfold. It's our time to come of age. Time for truth to turn.
What a beautiful voice. That's a gorgeous song, Bryce. Fantastic. Love it. it. It is a gorgeous song. I really like it. And I like the history of it because uh, when it actually uh, was first written in its other incarnation back in, in 2010, uh, my wife Jackie and I uh, wrote the, the lyrics for it. And I remember at the time just saying to ourselves, you know, uh, it, it may be silly. There's so much other work to do, but, you know, would it kill us if we had something that was kind of an anthem for disclosure? I mean, maybe we're trying a lot of different things. We'll try that. And so Jackie and I sat down for a couple of days and just uh, kicked these words back and forth. And uh, I thought they were good, serviceable words. And then Cherish sang them and I went, holy that's just fantastic. So I hope people enjoy that song. I hope they support it. If you want to support Cherish the Artist, you can actually buy the song from the usual uh, places or play it on Spotify or Apple Music, and that helps her as well. And we hope you do. There is a serious thing behind what Cherish recorded there, and it's the fact that you, you can't deny the public sentiment for a need to know. It really yeah. is, I think, the beginning of a groundswell here that the government, the Pentagon, the intelligence community, and frankly, the gatekeepers in private aerospace uh, should be very, very nervous about. And I mean, I just wanted to finish today, Bryce, by pointing to the fact that there's one other news event that occurred in the last few weeks that really does deserve scrutiny. The Office of the Inspector General of the Defence Department came out with a, a fairly boring sounding report, but nonetheless a report that made a momentous finding. It Essentially, the, um, the Office of the Inspector General for the Defence Department found that the Defence Department has a lack of a comprehensive, coordinated approach to address UAP, and that that may pose a threat to military forces and national security. Hmm. Now, that's a finding from the Office of the Inspector General of the Defence Department. And yet, in this very month, we've had an official of the same Defence Department splenetically ranting that there's nothing to this UAP nonsense. There's a blatant contradiction right there in plain sight. And that's why we need to know. We do need to know. I think it's the greatest uh, title out there. I've loved that our podcast can be called that. And and it the irony, I think, that you and I have talked about many times is if you just listen to anybody else's podcast or watch any interview done on this topic on uh, television or radio, 
inevitably somebody who's being interviewed will say, I mean, we need to know. It, it, it comes off uh, out of your, uh, your dialogue so effortlessly because it is exactly what people think. The people who are listening right now and, and, and people who are listening to everybody else's podcast all feel the same way. They feel like they have a right to know, yes, but they have a need to know because this is something that's gone on too long. And, and whatever relevance there was to not leveling with everybody is no longer part of that equation. We just freaking need to know and the time is now. So thanks for, um, you know, for letting us uh, play a little song and give us a little music into our lives. But remember, you still do need to know, and that's still our job. So we'll see you next time. See you next time.